they're laying over the stairs as they just stomp on it. Like an elephant with um, some type of cerebral damage. Warning! You're watching Dr. Todd Lee TV, where theoretically you could learn a bunch of cool shit. It is 2024, and it is time for you to get your ass in the gym. If you don't know what you're doing, that's okay. No one else in the gym probably knows what they're doing anyway. If you want help, I'm here for you. That I'm a medical doctor, I'm an IFBB pro bodybuilder, and I and Dr. Krita Dodson will work together to get you the best results possible. It starts with blood work. As I'm a doctor, I can order that for you. We review the blood work. Based on the blood work, a diet will be constructed, both macronutrient, micronutrient specific, unlike almost any other coach. Dr. Creed and Dodson is a genius in multiple ways, nutrition just being one of her many ways. I will design a training program for you to meet your needs based off of your assessment that we make based off of pictures you provide. If you want to provide pictures, that's not obligatory. If you have medical problems like cholesterol, blood pressure, et cetera, the diet will be used to uh, fix those problems. Not always, but typically, whatever medications you're on when you come to me, I will get you off those toxic medications, especially garbage like statins and beta blockers. I'll cut that shit right out and make you healthy so you won't need that stuff. Now, as far as HRT, that is, of course, my specialty you're covered. I'm more than happy to help you with your hormone replacement needs. If you're a competitive athlete, a competitive bodybuilder, that we will be just as competent, if not more so, than any other coach. Only unlike other coaches, I am a doctor. So you are much safer doing your competition preps with us than with anyone else. Please click the link in the description box to set up your consult so we can discuss how you can either get the body of your dreams or start winning if you've hit a plateau in your competitive career. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. How much cardio should I do? That depends on who you are and what your goals are. So I'll tell you what I do and why I do it and when I do it and how I would do it differently if I was different. That way I'm not um, breaking any rules. So, I found that if I don't do cardio my without changing my gear significantly, I saw my LDL cholesterol go up from a 55 to a 75, and my triglycerides went up from a 66 to a 116. Now, although I'm still extremely healthy, those are dramatic changes. And if someone wasn't as healthy as me, that would be a very bad dramatic change. So I've, and also it's difficult to get through a workout with having no cardiovascular strength. Last night, for example, I threw up doing biceps. So that's because I don't have the cardiovascular health that I need to, to even do biceps, let alone legs. For this reason, I've re-implemented 20 minutes of cardio a day, uh, three times a week. So not the day after legs, but if I'm on push, pull legs off, push, pull legs off, post push and post pull, I'll do 20 minutes of cardio because my heart rate's already up. In this instance, heart rate matters because we want to work our heart. And over time, your heart will get stronger and adapt so that more and more and more work will be necessary to get you up to that heart rate zone that you want. The healthiest way to train your heart is 70% of your um, maximum heart rate. The fat loss zone is 65% or less, but for heart health, it's anywhere from 70 to 85% of your maximum heart rate. Anything over 85% is relatively dangerous. So now I'm sure people are like, you're overemphasizing blah, 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 because they're making it about them. And believe it or not, they're not the center of the universe. And there are people out there who will watch this video where 85% of their maximum heart rate will kill them. So that's why I don't want, why I say it's dangerous. It's not dangerous to everyone. It's not equally dangerous, but for some people it's dangerous and some people it's not. But if people did it the way I tell them to do it, it wouldn't be dangerous to anybody. 
because eventually their heart will be so strong they could handle the 85%. The 70% of your max heart rate. Now, a lot of you might wonder, how do I calculate my max heart rate? Is 220 minus your age times 0.7. So let's say you're 40 years old. I wish I was 40 years old. So 220 minus 40 is 180 times 0.7 would be 126. So 126 would be a 40 year old man's maximum heart rate. I mean, for well, minimum heart rate for heart health, and it'd be slightly more than their heart rate they'd want for burning fat. Why is this? You'd think, isn't more better? More is not better. The more intense cardio is, the less fat you're burning and the more carbohydrates you're burning. That's why the best way to burn fat is with steps, with a nice low heart rate of like 65, 70 beats per minute. Just walking and doing absolutely fucking nothing but walking, getting steps in is the correct way to lose fat. Now, for some bodybuilders, if they're trying to lose a thousand calories worth of fat a day from steps, that would be 20,000 steps, which might be more than they actually have time in the day to do. That's why I do things like I put on my headset when I talk to people on the phone and I pace. It's because that way I can work up steps and I can burn fat while I'm on the phone. So if I talk to five people for 30 minutes each, then that's about 15,000 steps I just accumulated, which I burned 750 calories while I'm doing um, patient conversations with um, consults. Now, sometimes I might do a consult call with someone while I'm doing cardio. That's because I'm already there on the cardio equipment and I can either watch uh, Law and Order SVU or whatever's on the Planet Fitness Monitor, or I can call people back that called me. It makes sense to return people's calls. And, you know, you simply say like, yo, I'm doing cardio right now. If this is unacceptable to you, I'll call you when I'm done. Or I can make an appointment for another time, but this is when I'm free and I thought I'd expedite this process. Most people are, will consent to this. And I think it is a good use of your time is to try to get some work done while you're doing cardio. Other things you can do if you like is if you have a favorite show, only watch it while you're doing cardio. That way you're compelled to do like if it's a 41 minute show and you have a fat loss protocol of 41, 40 minutes of cardio every day, then you watch one episode of your favorite show fasted while you do your cardio and it makes it wonderful rather than awful. Now, I wouldn't suggest that for something like moderate intensity heart health cardio or high intensity cardio. For those, I would pick something more intense. Usually, I like to pick something with a tempo equivalent to what my heart rate's supposed to be. So, for example, if I was going to do HIT cardio, I'd pick something that had a really fast uplifting chorus that gets me so energized it makes me want to move. And the choruses are usually 20 to 30 seconds long. And then you usually have a 30 to 60 second verse. So it goes chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse. Then you just, get, that's five, iter four iterations right there. If the intro starts good and the outro starts good, and those uplift you, that's six iterations. Put two of those songs together in a row, and you have like a two or three song playlist that's only 10, 12, 15 minutes long, but that's your hit cardio music. And what's funny is there's a neural activation, but the more you play that playlist, the more your nervous system and your adrenaline gets all fired up so that eventually when you just hear that song, you get an adrenaline surge. This is useful for things like um, max rep, um, maxing out PRs. What am I trying to say? Final sets, work sets. So I listen to uh, an Amana Marath song, Father of the Wolf, before I squat. And, I've, and I only listen to that when I'm going to squat. So when it's a, a work set for squats, if I hear dun, 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 like that, boom, the nervous system's activated, the heart's pumping, everything's ready to go. For deadlifting, I listen to Dead by Dawn by Deicide. That every time for 30 years or something, shit, I've listened to the same song for deadlifting. For benching, it's Twilight of the Thunder God. So I have a specific song for each lift, so my nervous system knows exactly what it's supposed to do when I do that lift. And it knows, like, all right, we're doing this. And same thing, like, women will know this probably better than men that the way their husband smells triggers things inside of them that they don't have triggered when they smell other men. And it's something that's a neural association and that it really is helpful. So that's the same thing is that 
when I hear that, I'm ready for that lift. And I don't listen to that song unless I'm doing that lift, which is part of why it was difficult for me to let go of bench squat and deadlift. So then I have to let go of those songs. So likewise, I have a specific playlist for hit cardio. And that is really useful. Now, when is hit cardio applicable? I'd like to thank our sponsor, Fusion Regenerative Therapies, where I am the director of human performance. This is the practice in which I practice medicine. I uh, will be able to order you blood work and read your blood work and help you with therapy as needed based upon the results of your blood work. Please click the link to get a consult with me and I can help you optimize your performance. Thank you. Hit cardio is applicable in the off season if you want to get heart health benefits without spending a lot of time doing cardio. So hit cardio would be useful to get 20 minutes of heart health cardio done in five minutes. The thing is very few people when they do hit cardio actually work hard enough to do the cardio. That their idea of hit is really just an alternating medium intensity cardio with low intensity cardio, in which case you're better off just doing medium intensity cardio the whole time. If your heart rate's shooting up to 150, 160, that's for your um, for your um, intervals. That's when it's actually hit cardio. If you're not able to work that hard, that's okay. You don't have an aggressive personality. You're not a hardworking person by nature. Just do medium intensity cardio to get your heart health. Like after I work out, I'm not going to be in the mood to do hit cardio. I used to prescribe people the hit cardio before they work out. And it was effective for the cardio, but it wasn't effective for the workout. They didn't have it in them to work hard after they do hit. That they basically were done for the day. They have a very limited amount of emotional energy to expend on working out. Other people are hyper aggressive. They can't stand any cardio, but hit cardio. That's okay. Like John Jewett does alternating hit bike with um, the battle ropes after his cardio, because he'd rather be aggressively pursuing his goals than um, passively pursuing his goals. It's a better use of his time. I'm not there yet. Right now I'm doing medium intensity on the arc trainer and I pedal as fast as I feel like pedaling is with how the song tells me to do it. The song will have chorus, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, verse. And so therefore, since I listen to death metal or death core, it's still pretty intense, even when I'm doing medial cardio. When I do low intensity cardio, I have to keep my heart rate at like 108 and just not take it too seriously. But when I'm doing medium intensity cardio, I no longer have a governor on how intense I train. I'm allowed to train as intense as my body wants to train, but I don't have the obligation to push myself hard. So I find that it is the most enjoyable. It isn't as boring as less and it isn't miserable like hit. Medium intensity cardio is, is the intensity that my body wants to do. And I don't have to set the intensity on the machine high enough to drive up my heart rate. I just let my pedal speed to dictate that. So by picking the right music and putting myself in the right frame of mind, my emotional state will carry me through and do the heart health medial intensity cardio without any effort at all. And it becomes enjoyable rather than miserable. Watching a television show, watching a drama, unless it's an action movie like anime or fighting, I would just say it's low intensity. If you like watching like some ninjas fighting and shit, and that's your favorite thing, or you decide to put on Battle of the Bastards from Game of Thrones, and you get all pumped up watching Jon Snow face the entire Bolton army with nothing but his sword, then... That might be what you need for hit cardio or for medium intensity cardio. You have to learn to look inside you and find out what is your emotional triggers and how can you use emotion as a tool. Most people's lives are ruined by emotion. Emotion gets in the way of everything, makes it harder to think. And most of the people who make emotional decisions are total and abject failures in every aspect of their life. But there's a way of using your emotion as a tool. It just requires some introspection, patience, and some discipline. Three things that people simply don't have. But you could try, because it never hurts to try, you know, 
And a lot of people are like, this is getting too philosophical. It's supposed to be a video about cardio. And I think that why is my getting philosophical? The majority of people know they're supposed to do cardio and they don't like it. So they don't do it. But then they say the reason why they do it is they don't know what kind of cardio to do as if doing the wrong cardio is worse than doing no cardio which they know isn't true either. So I'm trying to really use this as a way of, you know, I'm packaging the medicine and some chocolate. I'm basically trying to teach you something that is find a way to motivate yourself to do cardio by attaching something you like to it so that you enjoy the cardio. And then you'll want to do the cardio and then you'll do the cardio. And because you're doing cardio, your heart will be better. And worrying about, how many minutes, how many times a week, which equipment and blah, blah, blah. And like th those are excuses to just not fucking do it. That's it. The reason why you want to know the details is you want excuses to quit and not do it rather than just now there's people like me who want to optimize it and are willing to put emotions aside. And what I found is that nothing I read online is ever fucking useful to me as a person. What's useful to me in person, I have to find out by experimentation, whether that's anabolics, whether that's training, whether that's periodization, whether that's volume, whether that's intensity, whether that's cardio, whether that's food, whether it's nutrition, none of that matters. All that matters is how it works in me. And most of the way it works in me is based off of emotional or psychological factors. So that being said, I like no impact equipment like the arc trainer or the bike, because if I use the step mill or the treadmill, it hurts my ankles. I find that the step mill hurts my lower back over time. And I'm talking about if you're doing a lot of cardio, like if you're doing two or three hours a day, a cardio a day, certain types of modalities will start to wear and tear on your frame. The bike will wear and tear on my knees. To this day, I've never found the arc trainer bug me unless I had it up really high with a high intensity, like a 15 to 20 incline with the intensity of 20 to 40, four times a week or five times a week for 40 minutes, it started fucking up my quad so bad that I couldn't recover from my leg training. So that's when cardio is starting to get in the way of my leg training. So doing a shit ton of any one piece of equipment is a shitty way of doing cardio. Now I'm going to tell someone, now this is where this is going to go wrong. I'm going to tell you what I've done in the past that worked for me. And then people are going to start messaging me, asking me, what was that thing in the video? I didn't really understand it. There's this thing called pause and this other thing called rewind. Watch this part as many times as it fucking takes for you to understand it. You don't need me to spell it out to you. I'm spelling it out to you right now. All right. So I would do the arc trainer and get my heart rate up. Then I would get to the bike to get my quads pumped up. Then I would do the stairs to cause my quads to seize up. I'm not telling you to do this. I'm explaining that there's a way of using each of these pieces of cardio equipment like notes. Like, oh, E flat's a cool note. And then you go write a seven minute, a 40 minute song with E flat. Maybe you might want to take into consideration the third, which would be, what is that? D sharp? No, it'd be F sharp, right? Yeah, it'd be F sharp. And then the next note up from that would be G sharp. So you, there's, you could, now you've got a, a chord, a power chord. You could do an arpeggio with that chord. So your first, a third and a fifth, that's how, that's all you need for metal is three notes, really. Yes, you should do a pentatonic scale, but what I'm going with this is you could take three pieces of cardio equipment and do them in a particular order and actually get a much greater effect than doing one piece of cardio equipment for the whole 40 minutes. I'm going to let that sink in for a minute. That if all the cardio equipment pieces are different, you don't do six months of one piece of equipment and six months of the other piece of equipment. You could do Monday, I do this piece of equipment. Tuesday, I do this piece of equipment. And Thursday, I do that piece of equipment. Or you could mix it up and do this and this on this day and this and that on the other day. So, for instance, the bike, like the stairs before legs, 
for five minutes and the bike five minutes after quads might give you an awesome pump. But the rest of the week you use the arc trainer because it works the upper body because you're pushing back and forth. Maybe on arm day, you do battle rope afterward to really get an awesome pump in your arms. That there's all these different ways to use cardio integrated with your training. You could even do it mid-training. Like there is a period of time where before I did leg extensions, I'd go do the bike and do five minutes of bike on a low setting to get a lot of blood in my quads and get my knees loosened up so that when I went and did the leg extensions, it didn't bug my knees so much. Then after I did something with glutes, I'd go do the stairs and I'd squeeze my butt with every step on a two or a three setting, really slow and deliberate and squeeze my ass with every step. There's all types of tricks you can do. You can put the incline on super high on the treadmill and do that after you do calves to get a better pump in your calves. You can do the elliptical with a straight knee and get a pump in your hamstrings after you do hamstrings. There's so many things you can do with the cardio equipment other than just hang off of it like a blob and then just drip your sweat and your fat onto the gears and equipment as you just plod along. How often have you seen these idiots put the incline up high and then they hang on to it and they're perpendicular with the, this is fucking taking advantage of the incline. This is retarded. You're just, you've now just canceled out the incline. You're not burning. You're not doing anything. What the fuck are you doing? The same thing with the stairs. It's like they're laying over the stairs as they just stomp on it. Like an elephant with um, some type of cerebral damage. Like that's not what the equipment is used for. You're supposed to th squeeze your butt and thrust your hips with every step to then keep using a neural activation of the muscles so that they don't get burnt off, just the fat does. The, this is the basic, basic core concepts of how to use cardio equipment is completely lost on everyone. <sighs> Sorry, I'm supposed to be more polite. I'm supposed to be less, um, what's the proper term, judgmental. I'm supposed to be permissive. I'm supposed to be ENTP instead of INTJ when I'm on the internet, that's, that's more um, digestible. And uh, maybe even ENFP, maybe that would be even more digestible. It's like, you know what? God loves you. I love you. We all love you. We all want what's best for you. We want all of us to get along and enjoy our gym time together. Nothing's as important as smiles, maybe kittens, but Please, pretty please, with sugar on top, when you use the carbon equipment, try just a little bit. Just try to put some thought into what you're doing and take it as seriously as you would, I don't know, eating or would it maybe lifting weights. Like maybe the cardio isn't just prison time. Don't just sit there and throw the ball against the wall and count the minutes till it's over, but actually take it as seriously as you would as a set, squeezing the muscle, feeling the muscle, feels are good. We all love feelings, but we don't like bad. We don't like painful feelings. We don't like the feeling of our ass on fire. Maybe some people do. In fact, I know some people do. I think they're strange, but they're entitled to having a burning ass all they want. But aside from that type of burning ass, there's a different type of burning ass. The type of burning ass you get from squeezing through the glutes as you drive your heel down, walking on cardio equipment. It's wonderful. It'll give you something. You don't even need the BBL. You're just going to have your own butt. It'll be a homegrown butt. Yes. So corn-fed homegrown butts probably taste better than free-range butts. But I wouldn't know. I don't go to Hawaii, Ohio much. I know that they're corn-fed in Ohio. This is not a dig on Hawaii, Ohio people. The world's strongest people are in Ohio. But... Now I'm starting to get a little too silly. Definitely, if I was monetized, I'd be demonetized. The comment section will probably be turned off on this. And this might have to go to one of the other platforms because I just talked about eating butts. But uh, it is what it is. Butts are delicious. That's where really got lots of muscle in them. That's what a rump roast is. Um, they wouldn't call it, they don't call it a butt roast. They call it a rump roast. But a butt roast is when you're in someone's car and they turn on the cedar to high. And they're like, why is my 
why is the seat so hot? It's like, oh, I turned it on really hot for you, so it'd be nice and toasty. It's like, why the fuck would you want my ass sweaty? What do you have in store for me, mister? It's like, what is going on here? But enough about sweaty butts. <sighs> That's something I wonder about girls' yoga pants. When they've got the split up the middle, I don't know. It just seems it's just awkward for me that they used to have yoga pants where it was just one pad of fabric. Now that it goes in and out again. So it's like a thong. It's like the most shaping, gratuitous, over the top, sexualizing thing in the planet is that they have like assless chap yoga pants where like the, if you look at them when they're not on the woman, there's like a circle where each ass cheek is supposed to sit through. And then it's got an extra stretchy fabric there. And you know what? And they, they make them a neon now. So it's like, no matter what. And then of course you're on camera. And if you look at their neon, what do you call it? Stripper wear, then you're a pervert. It's, they should actually make the yoga pants with the camera built into the yoga pants so that when you look at the highlighter covered butt with the neon colored butt, it catches you and then takes a snapshot and then sends it rex directly to catch a predator so that you're on file as a sex offender because you looked at a girl's butt at the gym. There should even be like a dinner bell ring rung when they walk. So like there's a dinner bell ringing as they walk and then you look over it like that and then it catches you on camera looking at their butt because you're a pervert. So, and how does this tie in with cardio? Well, if you really want to have gratuitous, what do you call it, attention and be as aggressively pursuing catching men being perverts as possible, do your cardio. So there's an emotional motivation for you right there. You got to listen to super fast death metal and you get to catch a bunch of dudes being perverts all because you did cardio. You could even do it at the same time. You've got the camera on your butt filming all the people behind you on the cardio equipment. And you can be like, oh, my God, look at how they stare at my butt. And then you can upload it to TikTok. And then people will be like, you can like hashtag victim. And then people will like, what do you call it? Be so, they'll follow you and they'll pay attention to you and tell you that you're so brave. You're so brave that you went and did cardio. It's like, because there's so many creepers staring at you. Anyway, so I just want you to know that when you do cardio, you're brave. Make sure to listen to death metal so that it's more fun and easy. If you like Law & Order SVU, make sure to check out the episode about the people looking at girls wearing neon yoga pants while they're doing cardio, because that'll come out next for sure, because they're a special type of victim when they dress like that, and then people look at them. Poor things. So I know I would hate it if members of the opposite sex felt desire or lust for me. That sounds horrible. I can't imagine the hell that would be to be an object of desire. But this isn't very sensitive because I'm not doing a very good job of being ENFP. I hope you enjoy this video. For more um, uncensored content, go to a different platform because this is the family-friendly platform of YouTube. Thank you. Bye-bye.